Hi friends, my name is Kat. Welcome to my channel, Boss Babe DIY. On today's episode, I'm going to show you a custom coat closet makeover I did for a client recently. Any of you who watched my last video may remember that I made over a nightstand from this old kind of shabby chic look to this dark blue and gold modern look. And the woman I did this for, Crystal, loved it so much that she asked me to come back and update her coat closet as well. So let me show you how I turned this closet from outdated and cluttered to sleek and functional. All right, I just got to Crystal's and before I take you inside, I wanna show you the outside of her house because it is so cute. Look at this, look at this sweet little cottage house. Adorable. I'm obsessed with this door. All right, see this little window over here? That actually goes into the closet that I will be making over. So let me show you the inside. As you can see, the closet is just inside the main door to the left. It's got this door on it, but the placement of it is a little bit awkward. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove that door. And here's the inside of that closet. As you can see, it's painted that terrible beige that I feel like every house has been painted at some point or another. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the old hardware in there, all of the old puck lights. My plan is to put shiplap along all of these walls. It's got this adorable little window in here that lets in so much light, but right now it just doesn't bounce off of anything, so I'm going to be painting everything white. I will be removing these baseboards and putting in a custom bench as well as some shoe storage underneath and some shelves up top with a couple of baskets for additional storage. First things first, I had to say goodbye to this door. Your services will no longer be needed. Next, I removed all of the old shelves and hardware in the closet. Why not? If you're doing this at home, you're going to want to be really gentle when you're removing things from the wall so you don't push through the drywall behind it. Oddly, this is plaster, so I actually didn't have much of a problem with it. Then I decided to remove the baseboards as well so I can get that shiplap all the way down to the floor. I wanted to remove the innermost piece of trim on this door frame just to widen the space up even just a tiny bit. Yeah, I have to say. What is she doing? <laughs> is she breaking her house? Yes, kid. That's exactly what I'm doing. It's really interesting in this old house you can see the exposed brick that they plastered over. I think Crystal said this house was built in the 30s or 40s and it's just so cute. Now that I have thoroughly made a mess, it's time to start shiplapping these walls. Normally when you're doing shiplap, uh, you'd start from either the bottom or the top, just so you have one clean line there. But since this closet uh, does have this slight angle in the middle, I'm actually gonna be starting here. I'm gonna go down first and then I'm gonna work my way up. That way uh, I'm not running into the middle of a board when I get here if I start at the top or bottom. So uh, we'll see how this goes. I started by cutting a tester piece just to make sure that it would fit along the wall and then I used that as my template for the rest of my shiplap boards. Next, 
Next, I marked out where my studs were so that when I'm nailing these into the wall, I'm hitting a stud and not just going straight through the plaster. It's really important that I got this first piece level because it was going to set the precedent for all of my pieces going below it and above it. I used my 18 gauge nail gun to tack these boards into the studs. I'll go back later and fill in these holes with a little wood filler and you'll never know they were there. Now you may notice me struggling to get this second board in under the first. What the cat in this video doesn't know is that she's already made a critical error. Is it that that first board is too tight to the wall? Is it that the wall is too curved? No, she's going to figure it out in about three, two, one. Learn from my mistakes, folks. When you are nailing this in, make sure you don't uh, put in a nail so low that you can't get the lip of the next board in. Uh, whoops. So I had to remove that first board, take the nails out, and start again. Yep, see that little nail sticking out of the notch there? Not good. Now that I've learned that lesson, I can start over with my first board. I re-leveled it and got it attached back to the wall. See how that second board fits so much better now? That's how it's supposed to happen. From there, it's basically rinse and repeat until I get all the way down to the floor. Okay, so I've gotten the bottom done and now I'm moving to the top. We'll basically do the same thing we did in reverse. This time I won't have to hammer up from the bottom, I'll just get to lay it on top, which should be easier. We'll see. Um, but I have a little bit of a problem here, and let me show you why. This piece, because it's at this angle, doesn't leave that same gap that everything else does. But, here's a trick. This is called nickel gap shiplap. And besides uh, sounding like a, a really rockin' band from the late 80s, early 90s, uh, there's a reason for it. So the idea is that if I didn't have these tongue and grooves from the shiplap already pre-manufactured in here, I could use There's a reason it's called nickel gap shiplap because if it weren't pre-manufactured with that notch and groove pattern it's got going on, you could use a nickel as a spacer between each and that would give you a uniform spacing. Now with this one, it's a little bit more than a nickel, about a nickel and a dime, but what you can do, see it fits in there snugly. So what I'm gonna do now is do that exact same thing for spacing here. Got a set here and I'm going to put a set over here and it should give me that same gap as the rest of the boards.
And now that that first board is in place, I'm basically doing what I did on the bottom, but in reverse. Instead of putting the lip underneath the board above it, they just lay right on top. Once I got to the sides here, what I did is I lined up the edge on the far left to the back wall and then leveled it out to make sure everything matched up nicely. Then, you guessed it, same process all the way up. Well, as is wont to happen in these types of situations, I goofed. Um, yeah. I uh, got to the place where it is level with everything else and it starts to curve upwards and I thought, oh, I'll just cut an angle for all of the pieces going all the way up, right? Makes sense, yes. And then I did, I measured the angle, got the angle right. However, you math people out there may know that the longest side of a triangle is going to be longer than that right angle. <sighs> so, the only way I could solve this is to shave off a portion of these boards and then it would not match this and that would just look ridiculous. So, I'm pivoting. Um, I think I'm going to remove this top board and uh, just take this um, this notch off of the top of it and replace it and then just leave this um, as is and then I will cover maybe cover this up with some molding or something and then just cover in or uh, patch all these holes and paint this whole thing white. There are going to be coats covering it anyway and there's going to be some baskets up here so all in all could have been worse uh, but that's what I get for not having taken geometry since 10th grade. Once I got that fixed, I moved on to cutting out the tiny pieces that go around the window. It has come time to cut around the window, and so what I've done here is probably certainly not the best way to do it, but uh, we'll see if this works. Uh, I took the um, I took the measurement from side to side and cut that in half, the radius of your circle, and then I placed this about mid or midway between those two points. Obviously, I don't have anything to screw this down to. Um, since I'm working on a job site, I don't have all the materials I need, um, so I kind of had to wing it. I. Uh, I took my measuring tape and measured points all the way around and have drawn uh, lines together to create the semicircle. Since this is going to be caulked in at the seams, it shouldn't matter if it's off just a touch, but this should hopefully fit pretty snugly around the window. Let's find out. I used my jigsaw to easily cut out those curved pieces. Not even close. <laughs> okay. I think I'm just going to have to uh, sit with this one overnight and um, do a little research and see if I can figure out a better way of measuring this um, before I cut into the rest of my pieces because I only have a precious few left and I don't really want to have to buy too much more of this. So I'll leave this for tomorrow, unfortunately. Before I left for the night, I filled in all of my nail holes and any other blemishes with this wood filler. Once it's dry in the morning, I'll just need to sand it down and they'll completely disappear. Thanks to the magic of editing, it is now morning and I'm giving that window another shot. I'll be perfectly honest here guys, I kind of just winged it. I took it piece by piece, I marked the top and the bottom edge of the window, and then I just kind of rough sketched in what it looked like the curve was, and then cut that out with my jigsaw. And you know what? They fit pretty well. There's a tiny gap, but I can caulk that in later. 
Now, here's where I started to get overly ambitious. I was originally going to leave this trim in here, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough space for my shelves to go in, so I actually decided to remove all of it. It's a little difficult to see, but this trim piece is actually about an inch away from the stud. And you can see up here, we've got this floating piece as well. So I think what I'm going to be able to do is actually remove this and push it up against here. So it'll buy me about an inch, maybe an inch and a half uh, across, which it doesn't sound like much, but in a tight space like that, like this, it can make a huge difference. Now I will say if you're doing this at home, you want to be very careful to make sure that that frame underneath isn't actually part of the stud supporting the wall. Crystal had actually originally asked about maybe widening this door and I told her I really wasn't comfortable since I'm not a contractor and I don't know exactly what's load bearing, but since this was clearly a floating frame, I was able to do it no problem. In the spirit of recycling, I decided to use the same boards that were on the original frame. I just sanded them down, flipped them around, and suddenly I've got a clean surface to use. I know it doesn't seem like much of a difference, but even widening that frame that two or three inches made a world of difference. To finish off the base of my walls, I'm adding this two inch molding all the way around. I also decided to add these trim pieces on either side of the wall just to make this look more intentional and less like a mistake. If you can't fix it, feature it. And of course I had to re-trim out my door frames. Instead of going back to the original molding look that was a lot more detailed, I decided to go with just some regular 1x4 and 1x5 planks to mirror the shiplap and make it look more modern. Then I caulked around any gaps I found. I like using this caulk that's specific for molding because it's really flexible so it's less likely to crack and you can paint right over it. This closet's already looking so good. After I've gotten all the prep work done, it is finally time to paint this sucker. The color I found to paint this closet is called Crystal Cut. Isn't that cute? You guys don't need to see me paint an entire closet, but I will say that it took me three coats of coverage over the beige walls and any of the raw wood trim and just two coats over the shiplap. While the paint was drying, I decided to move on to my bench top. For this, I'm using 3 quarter inch cabinet grade pine plywood. Cabinet grade basically just means that it's been sanded down smooth on one side and they removed as many blemishes as they can. Here's a trick if you're cutting out something with a circular saw. Lay your piece on top of insulated foam boards. That allows you a flat surface that you can cut straight into without damaging your blade or the surface below. I also ripped down a strip of plywood that I'll be using as my face plate along the front of the bench. I wanted to give the bench a really rich look and bring out some of this wood grain, so I'm using this Varathane stain in early American, and I'm just wiping it on with a lint-free cloth. Once all of the stain is on, I just go back and wipe off any excess with another dry lint-free cloth. 
I didn't want to leave the raw edge of the plywood exposed, so I decided to use edge banding here. There are a lot of videos online that show you exactly how to do this, but basically this edge banding is a very, very thin veneer with an adhesive on the back, and you basically just iron it on and rub it down flat. Then you go back later and cut off any excess, and that gives you that nice, clean edge. Once the stain dried down, I wasn't really happy with how light it was, so I decided to go back with this darker stain. I believe this one's called Honey, and it gave me that exact rich tone that I was looking for. After my coats of stain were completely dry, I sealed it with this Verithane water-based polyurethane in satin. While my bench top was curing, I started on the frame. I started by measuring exactly where I wanted and marking out the studs on my board. It's really crucial that I get these pieces screwed into the studs since this will be weight bearing. And of course, I wanna make sure it's nice and level. I used the same process for my two side pieces. I also ended up toenailing them into the back piece for some extra support. The front piece just gets screwed into those two side pieces. This is where it would have been a lot easier if I had two people, but I made it work. I wanted to give this bench some extra support, so I'm adding a cross brace here as well. You wanna make sure this is a really snug fit. To secure this cross piece in place, I'm using a couple of joist hangers. Now, typically you would see these to support your joists under your floor or in your ceiling, but I'm using it here just to give this bench tons of support. Did I overbuild? Probably, but this bench isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Now, of course, before I give this project over, I have to test to make sure it actually supports a human person's weight. And I am happy to say this bench is super secure and not going anywhere. My bench top is dry, so it's time to get this thing framed out. I had to do my best mechanic interpretation in order to get this face frame secured without any fasteners showing. Of course, a coat closet would be nothing if it had nowhere to hang coats. So I added several of these hooks that I found on Amazon for cheap. Well, it started raining. <laughs> I just got everything out of the yard. I'm almost done. I just have to make like two more cuts for my jigsaw, but I thought I could beat the rain. Folly. For my two shelves, I'm securing them on either side with a one by two. Now, since this one is on this angled wall, I had to cut an angle into my 1x2 as well as one end of the shelf to make it fit snugly. Once they were in place, I painted them the same color as the rest of the closet. I found these cute little wire baskets to sit on top of the shelves for some additional storage for gloves and hats and things like that. 
Now Crystal's like me and she loves a little bit of gold flair, so I'm just going to do a quick DIY on these baskets to paint them gold. I started with a thin coat of primer spray paint over the clean surface of the basket and then went back over with a metallic spray paint once that was dry. As a final touch, I installed this motion sensor light. And this closet is finally complete. As a reminder, this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. how much brighter this room is now. The light coming in through the window actually bounces off the wall and it just looks so much better. Before this room was dark and cluttered and hidden away and now it's something that Crystal can feature as the first thing people see when they walk into her home. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my custom coat closet makeover. If you did, feel free to like this video and hit subscribe because I've got a lot more DIYs coming your way. Until then, we'll see you next time.